Hey everybody, welcome to another video on the open source Tonex controller project. Uh, this concerns version 2.0.0.2, uh, which is uh, currently in beta. And today I'm just going to cover over what's been changed. So first of all, I just want to point out that I've um, done some updates to the GitHub web page. Uh, just to clean up some of the documentation and make things a bit clearer, because uh, we have a lot of platforms being supported now. So if you have a look at this um, hardware platforms page uh, over here, uh, here we have a list of all the supported platforms. So here's the, the Pirate MIDI platforms. Uh, and then we have uh, 4.3b, the, the zero, et cetera, et cetera. And if we click on a specific link in there, uh, we come up with a dedicated page for each platform that goes over things like uh, what a screen uh, looks like. The, this one's got some details about the different versions, uh, how to wire it up with regards to power, uh, wired foot switches, the uh, SX1509 expansion board details, and wired MIDI, etc. And so even some details about some different cases uh, that are available. Uh, and how to power it from 5 volt. So if you look across here, you can see there's a whole bunch of these pages. Uh, so hopefully that makes things uh, a little bit clearer on how to get things uh, wired up and running. And you can see some things here, like there's a 4.3b, it's an example of the, the user interface for it, and um, and uh, control settings and those kind of things, and connections, etc. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the first change that's been made. So I've had some feedback with a few people having some difficulties uh, using station mode. So what I've done now is made a new, um, calling it a locator system. So what it is, um, is that if you have a controller connected to your Wi-Fi network, uh, so you have the option of course of using uh, tonex.local as beforehand, but if you have any problems doing that, which can occur if things like um, if your, your router doesn't enable MDNS or some other reasons like that where things don't work. Um, we have this little program over here now. This is for Windows only, but you know who knows? We might get other versions coming at some point. Um, so this is actually detecting a broadcast from the controller and showing the address that the device is currently using. So I can actually click on that link directly and, and takes me directly to the page for that device. And uh, similarly, when, when the controller is now turned on, if you have a screen on there, uh, you'll get a, a little message that pops up and shows you that same IP address that the device is using. So I'm going to, just going to boot up one now. So it's just booting up now and syncing, and there it is right there. So that's now telling me that it's connected to Wi-Fi, and that was the IP, IP address that it's using, which you could type directly into your browser if for some reason the um, MDNS system is not working. Uh, so let's have a look at the, uh, the changes that have been made to the uh, web interface now. So we can see over here, we now have a row of icons that shows the status of uh, all of the effects on the pedal. Uh, they show as you know, grey if they're disabled or show as a colour if they're not. And some even show the, the type of the effect. So this one over here, the for reverb, the R is there is for room. So if I change the preset now, we can see that um, this particular one now, the Reverb is turned off and the uh, modulation is turned on. C is for chorus. Um, there's another one that uh, this one doesn't use any of them. Uh, so this uh, this page here now added a home page on the front here as it has a bit of a uh, display in here that's just purely uh, just for visuals. Um, the reason being is they had some feedback that some people would use the page and then go to swipe or something and accidentally change some settings. So the home page is is a, a safe page that can be left on without any risk of uh, modifying any parameters accidentally. Um, but you can, of course, once you just click on the um, the other tabs along the side here and everything is like it was before. Uh, we have a couple of new bits in here. So we now have support for master volume. So this slider along here lets us adjust the, uh, the master volume, which is certainly uh, very handy. Uh, so next up to cover is the Expressive Framework. So the, the company that makes the chips that go into these controllers is called Expressive, and they have a uh, integrated development framework, or IDF. Uh, the version I was using previously was uh, was a few years old, version uh, 5.0 something or other. Uh, I've now ported up to the latest stable version, 5.5.1. 5 
Uh, it's brought along a few uh, little subtle improvements. Not a whole lot's visible from the outside, um, but there's a few things like um, we now have support for USB hubs. However, there isn't really much point in doing that right now. So I can control uh, one Tonex for each controller. Um, but it, that's a bit of a, um, a stepping stone towards doing things perhaps like uh, USB MIDI and those kind of things. So it's nice to have. Um, things just in general are uh, just, uh, they run a bit smoother, a bit nicer. There's uh, various tweaks that they've done under the hood that Expressive has done. Uh, so now we're all fully caught up on that. Uh, so next up, we have a number of new platforms I've added for, uh, for this release. This one here is a WaveShare. It's a 3.5 inch display, the 3.5B in particular. Um, it's running a very similar interface, the fully featured interface like the uh, 4.3 does, but it's um, a bit more compact, but quite a few requests to support that one. Um, it has the same thing with regards to um, the fully functional interface over here. Um, things are a little bit tighter with the smaller screen, but it's still uh, very usable. So that's that one. Uh, next up is this one. This is a uh, JC3248W535C. It's quite a mouthful. It's another three and a half inch platform, actually very similar to the uh, the WaveShare. It's a, a little bit cheaper. Um, its connectors are a little bit less convenient, and actually mine didn't ship with the connectors. Let's happen to have these ones um, here already. Uh, and its USB port sits vertically, so it would come out straight from here, which is um, yeah a little bit less convenient than say the WaveShare that comes out the side. Uh, but anyway, that's that's supported. So next up, we have the WaveShare 1.9. It's um, available in both touch and a non-touch version. It's uh, quite compact. It's not quite as compact as, say, the uh, 1.69, um, but obviously it's a, a lot smaller than, say, the, the 4.3B. The interface on here is much closer to what's on the 1.69. I'll just uh, boot this one up now. Uh, once again, there's our connection uh, dialog box. Um, so it's just uh, the similar interface to the 1.69. It's a little bit more spacious, so the fonts are a bit bigger. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, next up, this one is uh, made by LilyGo. It's a T-Display S3, uh, available in both touch and non-touch. The, um, the touch part of it's been quite problematic. They actually um, they changed chips at one point, and I've got a user who has... Uh, one with the uh, old version of the chip, I'm still trying to get that one debugged, but the, the current version at least um, runs nicely. Uh, it's also very compact, it's, and it's very similar to the um, 1.9. Actually, it's 1.9 inch as well, and if I go the right way around. Uh, its interface is much the same as what the, um, the, the WaveShare 1.9 is. So that's that platform, that's the touch version here. And, um, and here's the uh, non-touch version of the 1.9 uh, LilyGo T-Display S3. Uh, it's available in a uh, plastic housing, and it uh, runs the same interface as the, as the other one, the, the touch version. Uh, so next up, we have uh, a small enhancement to the 1.69 touch version. This, the touch version now actually has touch support. So we have the ability to uh, swipe left or swipe right and actually um, change presets now. Uh, and that same functionality is also available in the, the two 1.9 inch ones if, if, the if you get the touch version. So the, the final feature of um, version two I wanna talk about here is support for the Big Tone X pedal. It was uh, a lot of work. It came about from uh, getting requests from a number of users, particularly the Pirate MIDI guys were getting requests from their customers to support it. Um, so in fact, I actually used the, um, some of the money that's been coming back from uh, sales of Pirate MIDI, my 10% my, um, my share of that sales, uh, used that to uh, reinvest, as, as you might call it, uh, and purchased a, um, the Big Tonex pedal specifically so that I could um, add code support for it. Uh, it turned out to be actually quite a large job. There's um, a lot of things in here which are quite different to the Tonex one, and supporting 150 presets was, um, yeah, it required a lot of other structural changes in the code, but anyway, it's all done and working now. So just gonna um, switch on. I've got the um, WaveShare 3.5 here. Uh, and we'll notice that um, in addition to clicking to Wi-Fi, the, the sync process takes a lot longer, same as it does on the uh, Tonex uh, PC app, because there's um, 150 presets instead of the 20 presets that we have on the uh, Tonex one. 
um, but we can now see that the um, obviously the the names are matching up. I can change over here on the big Tonex pedal, and we can see that the uh, it's changing over on the um, display as well. And we can do our banks and that kind of thing. We can, of course, change presets from here. We could do something like um, connect up a chocolate pedal <clears throat> and then change presets from that. Uh, and we have all the same features that we have on the Tonex one. So you can go into the, um, the settings in here and, uh, and change everything. Uh, only, only one thing that's um, important to note here is that I haven't implemented any uh, saving of um, any adjustments from the controller itself. So, for example, if I change the um, the base over here, we'll see that um, uh, this light's now turned um, orange or, or yellow. Um, and if we wanted to save that, we would then need to do the same thing we would do, do um, same thing we do normally with regards to holding this button uh, and saving it. But if we want to, we can um, just change, you know, change a preset, whatever, and it'll go back to green, and that change is not permanent. Uh, and you can see here, as I'm actually um, adjusting things in here, we can actually see that the uh, the screen is confirming our changes. So we can change the EQ <clears throat> from uh, pre to post. That's changing in there. So if I change the EQ, it shows us the value that it's been uh, been set to. And we can, in fact, actually even adjust these. If I go to the amplifier page and adjust the gain, we can actually see that the uh, the 4.3, the 3.5 interface is actually adjusting along with the the value set by the knob here. And if we have a look over here on the uh, the web control, we can see now when we come into here, we actually have 150 presets. The, the last ones are just off the bottom of the page when I'm running in debug mode on Chrome. Um, but we can see them there. And as you can see there, I can change presets from here and uh, changes on the pedal. And all the same stuff in here. We can do things like enable the noise gate. You can see it said um, power on when I did that. We can adjust the noise gate threshold there. You can see minus 39, minus 73. And if we go into presets over here, notice that there are actually the full 150 is shown here as well. So that um, you can actually change the, the order and the, the, well, the banking comes from the footswitch config, but you can change the order by doing things just um, like clicking that and then rearrange the order in which they correspond to uh, when selecting presets via MIDI and, and up and down and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so just to wrap up, just uh, a few thank yous. Uh, thanks to all the people on uh, GitHub who have been um, helping out. Uh, there's been quite a number of uh, contributions coming in from users. Uh, some other users actually helping out with support as well, which has been really good for me. Just people answering questions and helping out other users as they've got problems. Finally, just want to give a, a big thank you to the guys from Pirate MIDI. Uh, just to recap a bit there, we have um, a collaboration where they build up, or they make up hardware and um, they sell it at retail running uh, my firmware and they send 10% of that sales back my way, which has been really good. It's been able to pay for that, um, the big Tonex pedal and pay back a lot of the um, investment I've made in uh, various platforms. I've got like 15 different dev boards that I've purchased over the last year or so. Uh, so big thanks to those guys. Um, there's been some uh, YouTube reviewers that have been reviewing the uh, Polar products and uh, very favorably. So you can um, check those out. Um, I'll put a few links. Um, there's a few links on the front page of uh, my GitHub to, to those videos. Uh, so version 2002 uh, beta 3 is currently available. Uh, it's been been running quite stably. It's uh, close to being released. Um, if you want to go and check it out, it's in the uh, the beta folder under distribution. Uh, so check it out. There's a um, support thread on the GitHub. You can post any bugs to. Um, so. Have fun. See you next time, guys.